Welcome to Pleasant Green Sunday School. This is Lesson 4 for September the 24th, 2017. We're still in Unit 1 entitled Signs of God's Covenants. Our topic for the day, taken from the Adult Quarterly, is a change of heart. Our devotion reading comes out of Isaiah chapter 43, uh, verses 14 through 21. Our background scripture is taken from Ezekiel chapters 36 and 37, and also Titus chapter 3, uh, verses 1 through 11. Uh, and our print passage today is taken from Ezekiel chapter 36, verses 22 through 32. Our key verse reads, A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you an heart of flesh. That is Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26, from the King James Version. Our lesson aims today, number one, is to recognize how a spirit-filled heart makes a difference in the lives of believers. Number two, voice thanks to God for the gift of God's spirit. And uh, the third aim is to become receptive to the work of God's Spirit in your midst. We have three outlines for our discussion today. The first outline is entitled Vindication of God's Name. Uh, the second outline is entitled New Hearts and New Life. And the third outline is entitled A Renewed Relationship. I certainly thank and praise God for this great privilege for us to be able to share our Sunday School lesson with you. We hope that you will grab your Bible and pen and paper that we might be able to share this lesson with you um, and that you might be edified uh, also. Our biblical context for this lesson is as follows. The book of Ezekiel was written by the prophet Ezekiel, the son of Buzi, who was one among 10,000 citizens of Jerusalem deported to Babylon in 598 or 597 BC. His prophetic call was received five years after his deportation at the age of 30 and this was the age that uh, Jewish priests began their ministry. Ezekiel's ministry as a prophet extended for a period of at least 23 years. Uh, during which he witnessed the destruction of Jerusalem and Solomon's temple. And so the central message of Ezekiel's ministry revolved around the final fall of Jerusalem. Uh, the content of his message was characterized by two distinct themes, judgment and proclamation of hope. Prior to the destruction of Jerusalem, Ezekiel exposed the nation's lack of spiritual consciousness and its moral decline. After Jerusalem's destruction and the people uh, were in exile, Ezekiel prophesied God's intention to reclaim his people by giving them a new heart, uh, which would enable them to serve him as he had intended. Uh, it's important to note also that there are three outlines in the book of Ezekiel that uh, we want to make mention of. The first uh, is that Ezekiel pronounces judgment. Uh, through chapters uh, 1 through 24 and he deals with uh, foreign nations uh, through chapters 25 through 32 and then as Ezekiel uh, his preaching became dominated by the promises of restoration and mercy uh, for the future and that can be found in chapters 33 through 48 but Ezekiel also confronted the people in their sin uh, and he was offering uh, a chance to repent and also to uh, offer hope to to the exiles. Uh, we should also mention, uh, based on where this lesson uh, begins in the 36th chapter, it would be helpful uh, for you if you went back to uh, the 33rd chapter uh, as uh, uh, God talks to Ezekiel about being the watchman uh, and also um, uh, deals with his message. Uh, so we want to be able to understand where we are in the book of Ezekiel that we might be able to appreciate the content of that message. So we want to begin our reading today uh, with our first outline entitled Vindication of God's 
name. Uh, this is taken from Ezekiel chapter 36 verses 22 through 24. And I want to read this from the King James Version. Therefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord, I do not this for your sakes, O house of Israel, but for mine holy name's sake, which ye have profaned among the heathen, whither ye went. Verse 23. And I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which ye have profaned in the midst of them, and the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, saith the Lord God, uh, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. And then verse 24, And I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries, and I will bring you into uh, your own land. So I want to unpack this a little bit. and Keep in mind we are talking about covenants. And we are talking about the fact that God is concerned about how his name uh, uh, has been profaned. God is concerned about the implication uh, that he is not who he says he is and that he cannot do what he says uh, that he will do. And so if you remember back in the Exodus, uh, the children of Israel were delivered from Egyptian bondage. And God brought them out into the wilderness and intended for them to uh, uh, inhabit the promised land. But uh, God gave them instructions through Moses how they were to live in the promised land, in the Canaanite land, and how they were uh, 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 to adhere to his commands and obey its statutes and certain things like that. And so what happened, uh, Israel... Uh, contaminated themselves uh, with other idols and and what happened uh, they also contaminated the name of God and so God is concerned uh, in verse 22 uh, he's concerned about his holy name uh, which the children of Israel have profaned that's very important for us to understand that God's character is always an issue is always an issue with God that we maintain that character as we tend to uh, confess that we are uh, disciples of him and so it's in the Old Testament and also in the New Testament that we are to be holy but Ezekiel chapter 36 is a contrast of Ezekiel's present degraded state as a defeated and disgraced people with Israel's future restoration and glorification. So it opens with God's promise to punish her enemies, restore her land, and remove her reproach. God revealed to e Ezekiel the reason why Israel had suffered judgment. God's people had polluted the land with their sins uh, and it had uh, it had to be purged and we want to understand that about sin that it always has to be uh, uh, punished it has to be thoroughly judged and so God had allowed his people to go into captivity uh, for their sins but that was not the extent of God's plan uh, his plans for the nation of Israel and so they needed to understand that uh, uh, and to reaffirm as the prophet is doing that they are God's people and God is going to take uh, particular note of them and and sanctify uh, his name among them and also he's going to deliver them he's going to bring them back from where they had been scattered and, and give them and put them back into their own place and you know in a spiritual way let me say this we have been taken out of the world uh, and placed in the body of Christ. Uh, when you have some time, uh, if you would read the book of Ephesians chapter 1, and you can see there in the New Testament that, that we have been given every spiritual blessing. Uh, and so what God has done with us, he has removed us from the world and, and, and placed us in the body. And we are responsible and accountable to God for how we live as we uh, uh, are associated with him. And that is the, uh, the issue here with Israel, that they have not accurately, uh, uh, from a holy perspective, they have not represented God in a way that he might be pleased. And so... 
Uh, we always have to understand that we have a responsibility to the body of Christ to our brothers and sisters and we also have a responsibility to the world at large is to be a light and a beacon of of hope uh, uh, and deliverance for the for those who are, are, are not in fellowship with the Lord and so they had this evangelistic uh, 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 approach and responsibility if you will Israel uh, that God expected of them uh, to live in accordance to his standards uh, whereby they might be able to be hope for the heathen so we want to keep those things in mind and so uh, the question is asked in the quarterly in what ways are we guilty of profaning uh, God's name in our communities and in our world and I immediately wrote that uh, uh, by not understanding the death of Christ and so what we do uh, on first Sunday when we receive the Lord's Supper we we talk about first Corinthians chapter 11 and we talk about Paul says to the church at Corinth uh, let a man examine himself uh, what are you looking for when you do that prior to taking the Lord's Supper and so we want to be able to judge the body of Christ judge the death uh, uh, the life, the death, the resurrection of Jesus Christ accurately according to scripture so we might be able to understand that the death that Jesus died even as Romans chapter 6 verse 10 tells us that Jesus died a death to sin and so uh, what we understand about the cross we should appreciate the fact that God had sent his only begotten son uh, to be a, an offering a sin offering for humanity for a one time that he would give his life and shed his blood and so we want to be able to understand that we have to as people of God we have to die the death to sin uh, that we might be able to demonstrate to the world that God is holy God is able God can save God can deliver God can set free and so we want to be able to understand that these principles uh, and, and certainly the character of God uh, from Old to New Testament uh, has not changed. But our second outline is entitled New Hearts and New Life. Ezekiel chapter 36 verses 25 through 27. Again from the King James Version. The Bible says, Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you and ye shall be clean. From all of your filthiness and from all your idols I will cleanse you. Verse 26. A new heart also uh, will I give you and a new spirit and I will put within you. Uh, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you an heart of flesh. Verse 27. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and ye shall... Uh, uh, keep my commandments and do them so what we're looking at in these few verses is the uh, uh, the divine intervention or initiative if you will that all of these uh, uh, personal pronouns I God is saying I'm going to wash you uh, I'm going to clean you of all your filthiness I'm going to clean you from all of your idols and, and I will cleanse you and I'm going to give you a new heart and, and so what God is doing here he is washing away uh, the stain the sin stain and all of us that say we are saved we have to be and are washed uh, in the blood of the Lamb we are washed from our nature of sin we are washed from the old uh, uh, unregenerate nature we are washed uh, from our idols and uh, uh, um, even back over in Exodus chapter uh, 20 God had uh, told Israel thou shall have no other gods uh, beside me and so uh, we want to understand here this is the process by which uh, we are saved as we get to the New Testament we are washed uh, we are clean and we are given a new heart and we're given a new spirit and God says I put this within you and I will take away your stony heart that's what has happened to us that that uh, uh, rebellious nature and that that callous nature that we have as sinners God has removed that by saving us uh, supernaturally and he has given us in heart of flesh and what that means 
God has made us more sensitive and conducive to respond to his will and to become obedient. Uh, and then, uh, and I like this in verse 27, and God said, I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and, she, and ye shall keep my judgments and, and do them. And so we know that uh, as we as we look at our own lives, uh, God has done a, a, a miraculous work in us and continues to uh, wash all of the filthiness off of us. And some of the things are embedded in our lives, in our hearts, in our minds. And I, I can just say this about God. He's going to get it out. Uh, he's going to remove it. I like what he's saying here in verse 25 to Israel. I'm going to clean you from all of your filthiness all of your unrighteousness I'm gonna wash you and then cause you to obey me and that's that's we are that's what we are praying for we have to become more obedient uh, if we love the Lord and uh, we have to become obedient to his will and this caused Israel uh, uh, to go into captivity and sometimes when we uh, don't adhere to the Word of God it creates uh, uh, captivity for us it creates situations for us but I just thank God that he's in control and 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 so these covenants of uh, at least two principles about them one would be conditional and the other would be unconditional covenant but here God is saying I'm going to do this you can't do this I have to do this you can't wash yourself I have to wash you. Uh, uh, I have to put my spirit in you. I want you to walk like me. So I need to give you what you need uh, uh, to be able to do that. And we need to understand that about God. This is not something we can do uh, uh, in and of ourselves. Uh, Jesus says these words in the 15th chapter of John. Uh, Apart from me, ye can do nothing. But Israel's promised restoration was not... Uh, to be just their physical return and repossession of the land. God promised that he would take the initiative and give them undeserved spiritual blessings. Uh, God promised to cleanse and purify Israel from her sins. Spiritually or metaphorically, God declared that he would sprinkle clean water on them to cleanse them from their filthiness uh, and their idols. And so uh, we understand that God is 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 particular about who we are and how we present ourselves and our character and our motives and 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 that 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 uh speak to the things that we do god wants to cleanse us uh, of our unrighteousness and so god's action is based on the water purification practices of pre of priests uh, pouring water on persons or things to cleanse them from their impurities. I want you to look at Numbers chapter 19 verse 13 and verse 20. But I saw this in the lesson that I uh, underlined and I want to share this with you uh, from this uh, these uh, verses that we read. Uh, it says here, it is impossible, it is impossible to be accepted in God's presence without first dealing with sin in our lives. I hope we understand that. God will always address the sin factor in our lives. He will not brush it under the rug. He will not move past it and uh, and so as to leave you in that condition. But I, I just think this is huge for us to understand. It is impossible uh, uh, to be accepted uh, uh, the Spirit of the Lord is reminding me now of Psalm 1. I want you to read that when you get time. But but this sin issue, as I said earlier, that's why Jesus had to come. Uh, uh, he came to deal with the sin aspect of humanity. It had to be dealt with because we had no relationship with God apart from Jesus Christ. If you recall, Adam uh, 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 and Eve, they... Uh, fell in the garden in Genesis chapter 3 so we needed a savior to come and and restore us back to fellowship with God but the sin had to be dealt with and that's why Jesus died the question is asking the quarterly how can we guard our hearts against becoming insensitive unreceptive and unteachable 
uh, I want you to read 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verses 19 through 22 we don't want to quench the spirit uh, if we would allow the Holy Spirit to do a work in our lives and, and let him uh, uh, cleanse us, let him help us, let him uh, renew us, we will have uh, uh, the proper principles and attributes of, of uh, as Christians. Uh, uh, certainly we need to be sensitive to the things that God is sensitive to. And uh, we want to be receptive to correction. You know, the Gospel, uh, Second Timothy uh, chapter 3 I believe verse 16 17 talks about uh, what aspects the Word of God is good for the principles if you will and one of those categories that it talks about the gospel is being that it is able for reproof for correction uh, and that has to happen with us we have to be corrected by the gospel uh, and so but if we quench the spirit, if we don't want to hear what the Lord is saying to us, then uh, uh, we will become insensitive. We will uh, 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 become people who are unreceptive and, and certainly nobody will be able to tell us anything, which is not good as a Christian. And then our last outline is entitled A Renewed Relationship. This is taken from Ezekiel chapter 36 verses 28 through 32. Again from the uh, King James Version. The Bible says, And ye shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and ye shall be my people, and I will be your God. I will also save you from, your, from all of your uncleanness, uh, and I will call for the corn, and I will increase it and lay no famine upon you verse 30 and I will multiply the fruit of the tree and the increase of the field and ye shall receive no more reproach of famine among the heathen then shall ye remember your own evil ways and your doings that were not good and shall loathe yourselves in your own sight uh, for your iniquities and for your abominations verse 32 not for your sakes do I this, saith the Lord God. Be it known unto you, and be ashamed and confounded for your own ways, O house of Israel. So let's unpack this uh, a little bit. As the Lord says here uh, uh, in these verses, I, I, again, the divine initiative. Uh, God is saying, I'm going to uh, 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 give you the land. Uh, to your fathers and ye shall be my people and I will be your God now if we get into the New Testament we don't quote unquote have a land uh, as the church but we do have a position in the body of Christ that we have been given uh, but God is talking to Israel here and so he had promised them territory he had promised them land and the enemy came in uh, as the children of Israel became disobedient and dispossessed them uh, and so the Lord here is restoring and renewing uh, relationships with him and so uh, verse 29 God says again I will also save you from all of your uncleannesses you know and that's very important and you and I as saints of God we have been saved from things that defiled us we have been saved from our lust and we have been saved from all of the things that kept the relationship between uh, 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 you and God uh, to be contaminated we have been saved we have been set free and God is saying and I will call for the corn the increase and I will increase it and I and lay uh, no famine upon you you know Israel went through so much drought they went through so much famine God punished them uh, the Bible says they received double from the Lord's hand according to their iniquities uh, and so famine was a huge part of that when God stopped the rain and he uh, uh, allowed enemies to come in then there was no crops no vegetation, no food. Uh, and so in the New Testament, or uh, as we talk about the believers today, when we disobey God, we go into these droughts. We're not able to 
uh, produce the fruit. God expects us to bear fruit as Christians. He expects us uh, to, to, to present that yield uh, uh, as the right relationship with him calls for. And Israel had lost that. Uh, verse 31, God says here, Then you're going to remember your own evil ways uh, and your doings that were not good and shall loathe yourselves in your own sight for your iniquities and for your abominations. Do you ever think about where the Lord have brought you from? All the things that he has delivered you from. Uh, God wants us to reflect. Uh, we need to do that. Uh, I don't know about you, but I, when I praise the Lord, I'm thinking about one of the things I'm thinking about is what he has set me free from, where he brought me from. I understand that, and sometimes it causes me to weep uh, because I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God saved me and, and, and I was on my way to destruction, but God stepped in in the nick of time. And so, but I thank God. And, and, and then verse 32, God says here, Not for your sakes do I this, saith the Lord. Be it known unto you, be ashamed and confounded. Uh, for your own ways, O house of Israel, not for your sakes, not because of who you are, not because of who you think you are, not because you've done so many worthy things, but God is after uh, 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 the uh, foundation of who he is. God is after uh, what other nations are, are, are looking at. God is after the fact that uh, he is establishing the fact that he is a holy God. And God not only wants to do that uh, with Israel, he wants the heathen to see that he is God in and among the Israelites. And so uh, we are not to, to credit ourselves uh, or to boast, as the Apostle Paul says, it, it is a gift of grace not of works that any man should boast. I believe that comes out of Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 and 9. But I want you to read um, James chapter 4 verses 7 through 10. And what I was looking at um, in, the, in that scripture there was uh, the fact that humility uh, cures worldliness. Humility cures worldliness you know if we would uh, if we had the right attitude about this life and about who we are humble ourselves Peter says humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God and we need to do that uh, that we might be exalted uh, and so when we're humble about what we uh, need in our frailties God is able to help us and sustain us in this evil and perverse generation but the problem we have is the fact that when we believe we don't need God, that we can handle this. We don't need his help. And so we don't, we don't, we don't get the cure uh, that humility would bring about. But if we would humble ourselves and ask God to help us, then we would be able to, as John writes, that we would be able to become overcomers uh, um, of this sinful world. So... In the uh, quarterly here, there's a question list and discuss specific ways that believers can ensure that they maintain their right, uh, their relationship with the Lord. And so uh, what I like to do is inventory uh, of my life. Uh, I like to uh, look at my life through the word of God and uh, we tend to understand when we have fallen short. And so what we have to do is continue to read God's word. We have to continue to pray uh, for ourselves. We have to continue to fellowship uh, uh, with the saints and, you know, and be honest about these things. And, uh, and God is able to, to help us when we are, if we're going to uh, sin, we know that that's going to uh, disturb the fellowship 
uh, it's going to disrupt the fellowship that we have with God and then when we repent uh, repentance restores the fellowship and so we want to keep those things in mind and just ask God to help us uh, uh, and, uh, and I know that he will uh, because he has already began the process in your life and in my life he's already brought you from a mighty long way uh, so we ought to believe that he will be able to take us all the way and present us faultless as Jude says in his ben uh, benediction but we certainly thank and praise God for being able to share these thoughts with you today these passages of scripture with you today I also I uh, want you to read 2 Corinthians chapter 5, uh, verse 17. But we want to offer this closing prayer. Dear God, we ask you to keep our hearts focused on you so that we may be obedient to your will for our lives. Grant us hearts of compassion that we may show genuine love to others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So again, I certainly thank and praise God for this privilege of being able to share this awesome lesson with you. Study uh, the book of Ezekiel uh, chapter 36. There is hope for us today. There are promises for us today. God has laid out a plan for his people. We just need to trust and believe him and be obedient to him. So until such time that the law will permit us to come together again, we say God bless you.